In this video, we will look into the contents that are there in the script file named car.tickle. This file is written in tickle language and it is used as an input to the liberate tool. So the characterization conditions need to be well defined before we start the process. So now let's focus on the process of characterizing the cells in a library through this tickle script. Before we look into the command that sets the condition, we will look at the procedural steps that are need to be followed to successfully characterize the cells. As a first step, one has to define a template or a two-dimensional table containing index values for delay, power and constraint characterization. Next, an appropriate PVT or process voltage temperature need to be set. Next, define the path of the model file containing the definitions of PMOS and NMOS process data like VTH, thickness of the oxide, etc. And most importantly, the pin positions of MOSFETs like source, drain, gate and body has to be mapped appropriately such that the process data from the model file can be used during the characterization step. And next is to read the model of PMOS and NMOS into the Liberate along with the netlist file containing the cells which we wanted to characterize. Once all these steps are done, we are ready to run the Liberate to characterize the cells. This step would take some time to complete. Finally, once the characterization is over, we need to write out the .lib file from the Liberate. Now, we will look in each of these steps with actual commands and appropriate index values for the 2D lookup table against which our cells are going to be characterized. As a first step, we need to define a 2D array to extract the delay arcs which includes the propagation delay and output transition and we will use the same index values even for the power extraction as well. The general syntax is shown in this gray box. So as shown, the variable 1 defines the input net transition and the variable 2 defines the output capacitance and this is the default template with some random values is shown here. So with this default definition of template, we will use this commands okay, to characterize the delay and power using the type switch as delay and power respectively. Now the question is what value to put in for index 1 and index 2 and are these values are randomly chosen? What about the units of the entry? Can there be more than three index values? So these are the questions that might pop up right now in your mind. So I will answer them one by one. The index values are needed to be evaluated and for which the circuit setup will be shown in the next slide. So the values are not random. Regarding the units, one can redefine the default units. Say for time parameters, one can define one picosecond as the time scale for all the values that are related to timing parameters or one can also use the default values defined by our model file. We will not complicate things too much here so we will allow the tool to define the default values and the tool by default define the time scale in terms of nanosecond and capacitors value in terms of picofarad. If you want to know what are the other default values, you are always encouraged to open the .lib file using some text editor and see into the header part of the file. And the answer to the number of index values to be used can be any number. In general, more the index value you define, the more accurate results 
you end up. But that requires a lot of time to characterize. So in a similar fashion, one can define a 2D array for constraint arcs as well. Note that both the index values have the default time scale of nanosecond. And the actual command that needs to be defined is shown at the bottom. Okay, so it is named as constraint underscore 3x3. Okay, and the type is given as constraint. Now, let's focus on how to define the input transition index values in the template shown above. As shown in this diagram, we have to evaluate the input transition at VO1 node through a transient analysis for which the following schematic which has to be constructed along with the appropriate circuit conditions need to be set. Uh, we will first use only one inverter as a load and try to extract both the rise and fall transitions using rise time and fall time functions in the calculator. So once the fall and rise transitions are evaluated, we need to take the average and make as one of the entry in the index one. Later, we will use four inverters as the load and repeat the same procedure to evaluate both the rise and the fall transitions. And the average of that value is fed as the second index one value. For the third entry, we just extrapolate for 20 inverters load and the choice of this 20 is not chosen randomly. The liberate by default defines the maximum fan out to be 20. So we choose this as our reference to define the third entry. As you are now familiar with the flow, the voice will be muted and the video will run at 2x speed showing the index one extraction step. But with intermediate normal play speed narrating at concern points. This is the schematic that is used to evaluate the input sleeve index one first value. Okay, so which has only one inverter as its load. And the appropriate V pulse parameter are defined on this property window as shown here. So with this as our setting, save your design. And during the check and save, you will get warnings you can ignore those warnings just because there are unconnected wires okay so we will be using the same schematic and then we reevaluate the input skew for a fan out of four inverter so get into ad window and then what we wanted in this case is to perform a transient analysis and the output is taken at vo1 or the output of the first inverter and also the corresponding input is taken as our input signal. Okay, so we are mainly concerned with the output signal alone. Now, we have to perform one important step before we click on this play button. What we wanted here is to attach this symbol of the inverter with AV extracted view rather than to the schematic view. So we have already seen by making use of this config window we can perform this operation, but there is a rather a simple way to do this process. So get into ADE and then under setup, click on environment options and at the beginning of this switch view list, type in AV extract as the first entry of our switch view list. So what happens is when you run this simulator, the simulator actually looks for these views for these symbols. Okay, so since we already have the AV extracted view for the inverter, it will pick that to get attached to this symbol. Okay, if we ignore this particular switch or if we place this AV extracted uh, view, uh, say for example, after schematic, then while looking for this particular view list, it will first select the schematic and then attach that schematic to the symbol that is available here. Okay. So, 
So make sure that you put this AV extracted well before the schematic. And in general, it's always better to place it as the first entry in our switch view list. Sorry, I've spelled it wrong. It's AV extracted. Okay. Yeah. So just click OK. And then now when you click on this play button, the symbol is actually attached to the AV extracted view of the inverter cell rather than to the schematic view of this particular inverter cell. Okay, so just click on this play. And now that you have got this waveform, you can spread this waveform and then we need to measure the rise time and the fall time by using a calculator function named as rise time and fall time. So click on tools calculator and look for rise and in this, under the signal, you need to define your output VO1 signal. Okay, so select this VO1 signal from the graph and then use the default value. Make sure that your initial value is zero and the final value is 1.8 and the percentage for the low is taken as 20 and the percentage for high is taken as 80. Okay, so with this settings, click on apply and then click on evaluate. So this gives us a rise time of 39.79 picoseconds. And now that we need to calculate the fall time. Okay, so look for fall time function, select this and select your VO1 node and we will go with the default values. Okay, make sure that the percentage is, percentage for high is 20 and the percentage for low is 80 and then click on apply and then evaluate. So this turns around 22.65 picosecond. And now that we need to add this value with this value and then take an average, right? So what I do is I select this value and move all the way up to the top of my stack. Now, when I click on this plus symbol, it adds the first element of my stack with the buffer. And now I'm going to enter two and then when I click on this divide, it picks the numerator from the first element of the stack and use this buffer element as its denominator. So click on this and then click on evaluate. So this is the average value and we will take 31 picosecond as our sleeve rate for the first index one value. So based on fan out of one, we have an input net transition of 31 picoseconds and this is being rescaled for 0 0.031 nanosecond. Okay. So similarly, we have got the net input transition of 94 picosecond and again, it has to be rescaled to this in terms of nanosecond scale. In order to estimate a fan out of 20, we need to estimate a deteriorating factor. So this is based on the formula, like considering actual net transition divided by the extrapolation of the fan out of one input net transition. So that gets somewhere closer to 0.75. And now to, in order to estimate a fan out of 20, we use the net transition of 31 because second, and that's been multiplied with a fan out of 20 and along with a deteriorating factor of 0.75 and that leads to 0.465 nanosecond. So we are going to use all of these values as index one entries for the computation of propagation delay and output transition. To define index two values, that is the capacitor load, we will need to measure the input capacitance of the AV extracted view of the inverter. And this value will be again extrapolated to 4 and 20 for the second and third index values. 
since you are already familiar with the input capacitance calculation from experiment 2, I am not going to show you again. With this, we compute the first step of defining the template for timing and power extraction. Note that we will be using the index 1 value that we have computed twice for both index 1 and index 2 for the constraint arc extraction. Next, we are going to define the operating condition through the voltage and temperature switches to be 1.8 and 25 degrees Celsius. Next, uh, let's define the environment for Librate tool to look for the model file. The model file contains the process parameters related to MOSFET and defines the way to access the MOSFET from the model file. So here the first line defines the directory path where the file is located and then to this path we append the model file named as gpdk.ses. The third line specifies the external SPICE simulation engine to use this model file while characterizing the cells. Finally, the fourth and the fifth line specifies the pin position of MOSFET that is defined inside the model file gpdk.ses. In step 4, we perform two tasks. One is to read in the netlist file containing all the cell information. Note that these files are written in SPECTRE format, which needs to be informed through this format switch. And next is to define the cell input output pin names along with the clock and asynchronous signal that is related to sequential circuits. Also, we have to define which template is to be used during the characterization of delay, power and constraint arcs through the appropriate switches as shown here. Finally, we have to put the cell names that needs to be characterized inside this flower brackets. Okay, So this slashes denotes the next line. With all this properly defined, we move to the characterization step. As shown, we will be using the following command to characterize the cells. Note that the default characterization simulator is basically SPICE but we will be using a variant of SPICE simulator called SPECTRE which is the proprietary SPICE simulator from Cadence through this external sim switch. The final part of the script will be writing out the characterized data into different file formats including our desired .lib format. Note there is a .ldb format, a format that is specific to Cadence containing additional information than compared to .lib files. So all these steps are defined inside the script file. You may have to fine tune certain settings before using the script file in conjunction with the liberate tool. And this is the purpose of this video explaining each command that are used inside the script file. In the next video I will demonstrate you how to generate the netlist file and run the liberate along with the script file. It will also show you how to generate the Verilog file containing the cell definitions which will be used during post-synthesis functional verification step.